This tutorial shows how to use Docker to set up a Java developing environment. The code for this tutorial is available on GitHub. This tutorial supports Eclipse, IDHJ, and NetBeans IDEs. Please have the following prerequisites installed, Docker, a Java IDE, and a JDK. Let's get started. Open IntelliJ IDE. Use Import Project and navigate to the directory where you downloaded the labs repository. Open the developer tools folder, the Java debugging folder, and click on app. IntelliJ will read the POM file and import the libraries. Click on finish to finish importing the project. You can see the code under source main java. For this tutorial, we'll be looking at the user.java source file and the user service implementation source file. Part 2. Building the application. To build the application, click on Maven Projects. We'll now create a clean goal. and an install goal. First, we'll run the clean goal. The next, we'll run the install goal. The console will show that the build is a success. Part 3, Running the Application. Let's start the application development environment using Docker. Go into the Labs, Developer Tools, Java Debugging Directory. As you can see, there's a docker-compose.yaml file. We'll use that to start up the environment. Use docker-compose up to start, which will start building the images for both the web server and the database. While this is running, let's take a look at the Docker Compose YAML file. As you can see, there are two services defined, a database and a web server. The database has names the images, sets a couple environment variables, and opens a port for the client. With the web server, again, the image is named, and we do also define a mount volume from our local GitHub repository to the Docker instance of the web server. And we create a linkage between the database and the web server and open the ports for both the application server and for debugging. Next, we'll look at the Docker file for the database. We use a standard MySQL image, create the database and the tables using a script plus set some environment variables. The Docker file for Tomcat uses Tomcat 7 and Java Runtime Environment 8. We'll set a couple of user parameters as well as copy over the JDPC driver for MySQL. We'll create a directory for the mount point and open up ports for both Tomcat plus the debugging port. When Docker finishes bringing up Tomcat and MySQL, he can go to the Tomcat homepage and click on the Manager app. He can log in using System Manager as the password. This brings us to the Manager page. As you can see, there are the default apps from Tomcat as well as our own application called User Sign Up. Clicking on User Sign Up will bring us to our application page, which is DockerCon registration in 2035. Part 4, Debugging the Application. We'll start using the application by signing up Gordon the Turtle for DockerCon 2035. So we'll give Gordon a username, Gordon of course, a password, his first and last name, his date of birth, and his email address. All this information will be copied from this form and saved in the database. 
Go ahead and click yes to save him. Now we'll log in to see Gordon's registration. Oh no! Let's look at the code to see what the problem is with his registration. First, we'll start by establishing a remote debugging session. We'll add a new remote session. We'll name this Tomcat Docker. And if you notice, the ports that it's using is 5005. However, we use port 8000 in Tomcat. So we'll go ahead and change it to 8000. Click Apply, then OK. Next, let's see what's going on with the password. If we look at the password that sets the code that sets the password, we notice that it applies rotation 13 or rot 13, which scrambles the letters of the password. Let's go into debug mode, Tomcat Docker, and you'll see it's connected to the target or Tomcat. We're going to register a new user. We'll register Moby. And as previously, we'll give them the first and last name. And date of birth for Moby, which happens to be the day Docker was first released. And of course, Moby's email address. So where we set the breakpoint for setting password, we see that the password is M0BY. This is what we've entered. Next, we'll see what was actually written to the database. So we'll go ahead and set a breakpoint for get password. And again, we'll have Moby attempt to log in. When we see that it logs in, the actual password that's returned from the database is Z0OL. This tells us that the password that we entered is not matching the one in the database. So we'll change the code under user implementation, service implementation, so that when we enter a password, it'll match the one in the database. First, we'll import the rotation 13 class. Then for the sake of this tutorial, We'll create a string variable called password, P-A-S-S-W-D, and apply rotation 13 to the password that's entered in the form. Where the code checks for the database password and the entered password, we'll go ahead and change it to P-A-S-W-D. And we'll set a breakpoint here too as well. Let's try logging Moby in again. Now, as we look at the values from the variables, we can see that the password is Z0OL from the user, and that the password that we entered or was sent through the form is Z0OL. So, if we hit complete, Moby is able to log in. So to summarize, what we've done is set up a Maven application from GitHub We've built Docker images for Tomcat and MySQL, and then used Docker Compose to run Tomcat and MySQL containers. We've established remote debugging in Tomcat, and we debugged a live Spring MVC application using containers.